Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. And I gotta tell you, I just received in a brand new TIG welding machine. Now this machine is a CK Worldwide. Yes, CK Worldwide is getting into everything. Now this particular machine is a 200 amp AC-DC machine. And it's not a normal 200 amp AC-DC machine. This is a professional AC-DC machine. Now there's a lot of machines out there and they go up the scale starting at the bottom all the way to the top. My favorite machine has always been for the last 10 years a Lincoln V-Tool 5 AC-DC. And for those of you that have those machines, uh, I know that you've experienced great experiences with them. But the machine isn't made anymore, so now I was looking for something to replace it. I now have that. Okay, so what I've got is I've got a machine that I used to pay $4,000 for, and now it's less than half of that. So this is an MT200 ACDC, and I'm gonna show you some of the features on here that typically you don't get in any average machine. And the reason I'm excited about it is because I got to put all the features in. And as a result of that, I've got a little sticker on the side here that says Mr. Tig Series. So uh, just know that if you have any questions or concerns, if you go out and buy this, you can always call me if you have uh, anything you want to change. In the meantime, I'm going to show you what I put into this machine. So let's start off with what you get with this machine. When you pull it out of the box, is, here's the machine itself. The knobs on here were put on purposely. We didn't want to go the entire digital front because it's so difficult to see, it's so difficult to set up. So you're gonna see me going through a couple of the features, but the whole purpose behind this is to make it easy to use. And I get those phone calls all the time on setup of the machine. There's a sweet spot on these knobs. So if you're an AC, it's gonna show you exactly where to set it. And I guarantee you 90% of the time, it's gonna be correct where you want it. Easy to use, there's six knobs on here. So let's go through what comes with the machine. Well, CK, of course, makes very excellent torches. It comes with a CK-17 flex head, standard with the machine. And you'll see this is a CK den, so it's heavy duty. Now this is what's interesting. We got them to manufacture this very Americanized. Uh, it's got the standard 3 8 brass fitting, so this just screws into the machine. And that's the way that it really should be. And if you'll notice, everything is first class. Now this regulator isn't a normal regulator. Now this particular one is Mr. Tigger approved. It goes down now to five CFH. And that's for the very fine micro welding. And it goes all the way up to 60 CFH. So that's gonna handle everything that you could possibly need. It's got the upgraded reinforced tubing. And again, on the back of the machine, and we'll show you a little clip on that, it's just a standard 3 8 thread in. So we don't have to go through adapters or anything else. So let's take a look at this foot pedal right here. Now what's special about this foot pedal? Well, I gotta tell you, for years and years, there's always been a battle as to what's the best foot pedal. And it's, uh, it's all over the place, but 50% of the time, the welders that have a chance to use this, this is the old Miller style foot pedal. It's not a Miller foot pedal, but it has similar characteristics. And if you look at the heel stop on it, that becomes critical because you, you need to get your foot position. You don't need to guess because you flipped your hood down and you know, you know exactly where you're at when you've got this stop on it. Now, what's also important is the foot pressure. And we played with different pressures, everything from uh, six uh, pounds per square inch or six pounds up to 22 pounds per square inch. And as we pressed down, we found that the ideal was right around eight to nine, somewhere in that category. So uh, take a look at it, and we've, we've tested this and tested it. Uh, it's just, it, it looks old fashioned, but it's what everybody wants. So it has an amphenol connector on the front of the machine. It's a five pin amphenol. So again, high quality, heavy duty. Let's jump over here to the ground clamp. It's not a cheap ground clamp. This is a brass slash copper ground clamp, which has the heavy duty DENS 35 solid connector. So we get over to this right here. Yes, this machine is 115, 230 volt single phase. So all you have to do is plug this adapter in and you can run it on 110. 
Now the weight of this machine, I think it's arguably around 37 pounds. So from a shipping standpoint, we're trying to keep this under 50 pounds. Now, this is another thing that will come with it. And you know, when you first get your TIG machines, typically you have your standard cups and collets and collet bodies. Well, this has the stubby gas lens and I recommend it highly. And I'm gonna show you right now how to, how to install a stubby gas lens. If you've never done it before, it, it's easy. This insulator comes in the package. Put this insulator on, back your cup or your back cap off just a little bit and you can drop in your collet, take your gas lens. Now, what is a gas lens? It's, it's a lens that distributes gas, but it has a series of screens in it. Okay, then you put on the cup. Now this one happens to be a number seven cup. Okay, and put your tungsten in, stick out about a quarter of an inch, and you're ready to go. Okay, so Everything that you see here comes in one box ready to go. Now, I'm gonna to go to the front of the machine and show you how to install it. Okay, now you'll notice a little cartoon here that resembles a TIG torch. That's the port that you wanna plug your torch into. And you'll leave it there for both AC and DC. So once it's in there, it's good to go. Now the gas itself, little hose here. All I do is thread this in. Just very lightly tighten it. It's brass to brass, so it'll seal very nicely. Okay, so that takes care of that portion. Okay, this is the five pin Amphenol. And if you'll notice, there's a guide right here. It's only gonna go in one way. So you've gotta find where that is. Okay, so that's tight. Now I've got the ground clamp, put it in place, turn right. Clamp on my workpiece or work table. I've only got one thing left. That's the regulator and I need to thread this into the back of the machine. It's the standard 3 8 thread. And I tighten that, again, just very lightly. It's brass to brass, so it'll seal nice. Okay, so that's all there is to the setup. In the very back of the machine, you can plug this into 220 single phase or put the little adapter on and run 110. Now, just so you know, when you plug this into 110, you're not gonna get the full 200 amps. You're gonna get somewhere around 120 amps, maybe a little higher than that, depending on uh, the circuit that you've got. So just know that uh, for portable uses, you're only gonna get whatever the, the wall socket's gonna give you. So, 120, 125, you may get 130. Uh, everybody's gonna get a little bit different. Okay, in order to use this machine, very, very simple. You have AC if you wanna do aluminum welding or magnesium, DC, that's DC minus, if you wanna do steel, stainless steel, Inconel, titanium, almost all other materials. This toggle right here is panel or remote. Panel being, if you push it on panel, it's what amperage that you're reading right here. If you put it on remote, that means you're putting a foot pedal on or some kind of a trigger mechanism that's remote. Okay, so let's go over to this toggle. This toggle is pulse if you need pulse, which is not very often. All you have here is pulse off or pulse on. 
So if you turn the pulse on, there'll be some settings for you a little bit later. Okay, for right now, turn the pulse off. And then this toggle is merely TIG or stick. You're either gonna be TIG welding or you're gonna be stick welding. If you go to stick welding, it's gonna show you an amperage that you're gonna set your stick welder at. Okay, but we're gonna do TIG welding today. Now, let's go, we have a total of six knobs and these knobs are very specific. Now, we designed this instead of a flex membrane panel where it was so confusing. We made these knobs easy to read, easy to turn. And if you'll notice in the background, there's a blue, what we call the sweet spot. So if you forget your setup or anything else, and you wanna go back to the most used times that you'd use each of these functions, just go back to the sweet spot. So let's go through them. If you're on aluminum welding, AC, you've got AC frequency. I happen to like 120 hertz, and that's where the blue spot is. So yeah, you can get out of control and you can get up here in the 250 hertz range and this machine will really sound like a bumblebee. Okay, now let's go to this one here, AC balance. This is extremely critical because this determines how much penetration or how much cleaning you get. And this is one of the most made mistakes in setting machines up. Again, take a look, there's a little bitty sweet spot. And I've determined that to be somewhere around 73%, maybe possibly as low as 71% negative. So that means you get some cleaning and really good penetration. If you go to maximum cleaning, you're gonna see a, a quite a bit of cleaning and not very good penetration. Your tungsten's gonna ball up into your torch. If you go to maximum penetration, then you're gonna get a lot of penetration, but you're not gonna get a lot of cleaning. So let's go back to the sweet spot. All right, now let's go here, post gas. This machine has post flow, that's the argon. Now, you don't wanna use up all your argon, so most of the time you're gonna be around five or six seconds. After you finish your weld, you're gonna get a post flow. The argon's gonna run for six seconds and then stop. If you're welding titanium, you're gonna need much, much more than that. So that's why we have this. You probably notice we don't have a pre-flow and that's on purpose. This acts as your pre-flow. All you have to do is tap your foot control and you've got pre-flow and post-flow. All right, pulse frequency. You know, that's, that's really a personal preference. Uh, you know, if, if you're adding filler material, you're only gonna run about one pulse per second. If you're running some crazy uh, pattern that you want, you want a certain ripple effect, and we're gonna play with this, then you can turn this up. But most of the time, you're gonna be pulsing down here in the lower pulses. Most of the time, I do not use pulsing. Okay, now let's get into the background amps. This is only for pulse welding, where you have background pulsing going on. And when I say background, you're gonna have a current that you're gonna set. This machine has a background amps, and I like 50% as the background amp. So that's why you have the sweet spot there. And we're gonna do a demonstration on DC showing you how I use the 50% background amps. Okay, finally, this is probably the most important knob on the machine, and this is the amperage knob, and we can take it all the way up to 200, and what that'll mean to you is if you're running with a foot control, you're gonna light off at five amps, and you're gonna have the full range of 200. If you need that, then that's fine. But most of the time, you're gonna be running uh, uh, up in this range, you know, use the formula one amp per thousandth of thickness and, uh, and then just this amperage control accordingly. Hi, I'm back. You know, after we got the machine set up, uh, just want to test it. So I set it up on AC, 
And uh, i got to tell you, the features on this machine are so smooth. This is aluminum, and I was just doing a bead on plate just to see if everything was set up correctly and the gas was flowing beautifully. And this material is probably uh, 20 thousandths thick. And what's interesting is I was able to control it on the surface, not even penetrate on the back side. When I got to the, to the end of the weld, one of the big problems with aluminum is that it has a tendency to crack and it has a tendency to create a, a low crater because the amperage usually drops out too quick. And this one is just absolutely awesome. So um, it, anyway, kudos again. I really want to thank everybody that put efforts into building this machine and especially CK Worldwide. I uh, also want to thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.